Hello, everybody, and welcome to NeilRodriguez.com, hosted by yours truly. We are here with Rand Fishkin, possibly the presence of greatness, uh, according to, to the marketing industry, the search marketing industry. He is effectively the chairman of the Federal Reserve. Not Ben Bernanke, this is Alan Greenspan. Okay, he extrapolates data sets and he gives you all the information short of that will get you on the front page of the search engine results, results short of having an iPhone app that you could go ahead and type a nuclear launch code to and just paste yourself on a front page of the search engine results for the most competitive keywords in your industry. So he spoke this morning. I didn't get to see it because I was stuck in traffic and here in New York, I don't know if you've been through it. I mean, I wish I had a, a Cyclops visor so I could move everybody out the way because it was moving at about an inch an hour. So finally got in, but I'd like for him to recap on what he said. Can you discuss it? Yeah, absolutely. So um, as you mentioned, we like to collect lots of data at SEO right, Moz. Right. We, uh, I think there's a lot of ways that you can know information about SEO, right? You can listen to what the search engines say. Uh, you can test things on your own website and have anecdotal case studies. Uh, you can read papers and patents. And then you can do uh, what I presented this morning, which is correlational data. And that is taking large sets of uh, rankings. So our you know query set is about... Uh, 10,000 queries from Google.com in the U.S., uh, all sorts of different kinds of queries, one to six words, sort of fat head, chunky middle, long tail, all different kinds, and uh, collected just recently. And then we essentially run data to show graphs around, is it better to have shorter URLs, right? That, does that predict that you're going to rank higher or lower? Is it better to use keywords in your domain name? Is it uh, better to use them in your subdomain? Is it uh, wise to have them in query parameter strings, all those kinds of data sets. And so I presented a lot of stuff on that and I'll, uh, yeah, I'll try and actually throw that on the SEO Moz blog in the next few days. So then I can, you can sort of refer back and see all those charts and say, okay, correlation data says I really should be doing this and that, you know, I think that that really means, uh, you know, stuff like domain.com slash keyword or, you know, even, even more preferably keyword.com. As okay. opposed to something like domain.com slash A slash B slash C, right. question mark ID equals X, Y, and PL equals, in, in, all, that, all that stuff is, is far lower correlated with rankings. In fact, one of the more interesting data points that we saw probably is that uh, having query parameters in your URL is, has, a, I guess, a negative correlation with rankings. Essentially, you don't want that. Okay, having having excuse me, query parameters with the URL, a negative rank, uh, negative. Okay, yeah, that's a problem that the spider may have uh, in call in reading that URL. Is that what it is? Well, so I don't getting caught up I in think ID. The engines do a pretty good job actually of picking them up. I mm -hmm. think really, at least that I would surmise that what happens is is people tend to have lots of problems with query parameters in the URL, mm -hmm. like. You have lots of URLs with different parameters that actually show the same content. So you've got duplicate content issues, you're splitting up your link juice, all that kind of stuff. You probably also find that there's a lot of uh, affiliate IDs and referral IDs and all that kind of stuff. So these are problems. Uh, and then I think you, you'll find other things that are uh, issues in there. So you, you might have things where people are less likely to grab a link with, a, with query parameters in them. and actually link to those than they would be to cleaner, shorter domain also, uh, URLs. Yeah. So, it's more, so it's more of a malfunction of the human mind rather yeah, it's than not, a, okay. it, It's not necessarily, I mean, the, the first thing that I presented on this morning was I said, correlation is not causation. Uh, okay, and I'll, right, I'll give right, you an right. example, right? So like, yeah, I mean, I learned that in psychology. So. Sure, so, <laughs> right, or hopefully psychology and statistics, right? Yeah. So like, if T is the, the uh, temperature in Manhattan, okay. and I is the number of ice cream vendors, okay. uh, then it turns out that the number of ice cream vendors is highly correlated with temperature. So okay. would you say, you know, Neil, that ice cream vendors are what make it hot in New York? Uh, not necessarily. No. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I hope it's like a, a strict no, right? So right. this is the same kind of thing where we say, well, these results, like these kinds of things, features and URLs tend to predict better or worse rankings, mm -hmm. but it doesn't necessarily mean that's because of them. Right, exactly. You know, just, exactly. just like you go out on a hot day, you happen to find ice cream vendors. Right, Turns right, right. out that's because ice cream vendors know they can sell more on hot days, right, right. not because they're actually causing the weather. Or they're just driving 18-wheelers that just produce a bunch of smog and make it hotter so people will have to buy the ice cream because they want to get you. So, okay, well, right. you know, maybe you've disproved my causation. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. No, I doubt it. I doubt anybody thinks it, 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 as absurd as I do. Okay, so, all right, is that, so it was pretty much in regards to that people are, have the mindset that they do not find these types of 
URL is attractive doesn't necessarily give the search engines uh, carpal tunnel syndrome when they try to support when they try to read these URLs. Am I right? Uh, so I think the data only suggests or the, or the data only shows you what's happening. It doesn't okay. say why it's happening. Okay. But I would surmise that both things that you talked about. Number one, engines not having a great super easy time with lots of multiple URL okay, parameters okay. and duplicate content issues, et cetera, et cetera. And number two, human beings not particularly liking them either. Okay. So I think those two things combined makes it very obvious that the best practice is go with these cleaner, simpler URLs. Okay, all right. And just to give you my little two cents, I actually remember that I read a, I think it was a marketing Sherpa study that found that people actually clicked on URLs that were shorter when, when they were producing right next to the search engine snippet and I mean based on some of the patents that I've read through uh, I noticed that that uh, you know the amount of times that you get now the click-through rate is even uh, contributing towards your ranking as well yeah so the engines on click-through rate I'd be a, I'd be a little bit careful about saying it definitely contributes or really doesn't okay to, uh, ranking so uh, I, we talked to some folks at Google and they're they're pretty public with the fact that they don't use click-through rate as a ranking signal but they do use the absence of click-through rate. Mm -hmm. So, for example, let's say that someone performs a search for, you know, diamond jewelry, okay. and they don't click any of the results. And right. lots of people don't click any of the results. That says to Google, these are probably poor results. Right. But if you see that everyone clicks on one particular website, that might actually be a spam signal, right? That might mm, be. Okay. It's very easy to gain click-through rate, mm -hmm. and so therefore, as a search engine, you don't want to rely on that. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, as long as we cleared that up. All right. So, uh, anything. That you Will you be speaking at, uh, at this event or in any other upcoming events here in New York City? Uh, not in New York, but I will be speaking in London uh, two weeks from now. Okay, great, uh, so great. Yeah, lots of travel. Oh, yeah, definitely. London. Okay, great, great, great. So I had the London Bridge for me. <laughs> and, uh, it's not there anymore. They moved it to uh, Arizona. Oh, really? Yeah, that, that crazy guy bought the London Bridge and had it shipped out to Arizona. Oh, wow. That's, yeah. that's how non-cosmopolitan I am. I mean, <laughs> I, I barely travel. My wife has me on a tight curfew, and it's non-negotiable. Um, hopefully, after she uh, has the baby, she's having a baby in February. Oh, congratulations. Be, yeah, thank you, thank you. I'll be able to possibly hit some more conventions and we can meet up again. Sounds great. Discuss it. It's been very educational. I hope it's been educational for you. It better be. Otherwise, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to learn this, but if you do follow uh, Rand Fishkin's advice, we'll definitely have a better chance of ranking for those competitive keywords in your industry. So just follow his advice. Keep those URLs short. Don't make them as convoluted as possible. Don't add ampersand, question mark, and every other Klingon uh, unknown symbol that's out there. Okay, and uh, so as I said before, you have any closing thoughts for our, uh, for our viewers? Uh, well, so I would definitely suggest that, uh, yeah, if you want to, if you want to go ahead and keep an eye on the SEO Moz blog, we're going to have lots more of this data study type of thing around uh, other features, not just URL stuff. Any, any updates for the tools? Yeah, there's going to be a big update. It's uh, a few months away, so I'd watch out for that in end of January, early February. So. Okay, I've, I've actually been asked about the, what is it, what is it, the, that tool that it grades the, what is it, term, term targeter? Term target tool, yep. That's term a, target that's tool, any updates for that? Uh, yeah, that'll be part of the refresh that's coming in Q1 next year. Okay, great, great. So stay on top of it. It's a pretty cost-effective way for you to be able to identify what are keywords that you can rank for. Uh, that's not the targeted tool, but that's other tools that's in Rand's uh, tool set. And stay on top of SEO. Uh, Moz.org. If you don't already, it's probably already obvious. If you uh, have any idea of you know what it, what it is to take take you to you know to rank on the search engines or even to possibly Google something. Uh, this is the man, by the way. I saw a video on you that proposed to his wife on a commercial, right? Yeah. You raised that's, like that's what, right. what was it, like fifty thousand or, or no? I I think we only raised about ten thousand dollars, but um, yeah, and then ended up donating that. But yeah, it was a it was a fun experience. Definitely. All right. So if you want to put together a, a reality show. This is the venture capitalist to raise the money for it. Ooh, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are here at SMX, and it is the last day. We are in mourning, although we are wearing light colors. Uh, if you have time, if you got the cash to come through, uh, can't promise any complimentaries, can't promise a a any more comps unless I speak to somebody over here. We'll see what happens. But next time you see Rand Fishkin is in town, get take your hand out of that homeless guy's change cup and come through. This is SMX 2009, the G8 Summit of the search marketing industry. I thank you for watching. Until next time.